taking a sip of my bubbly. Not sponsored, but no one will be happier than me to be sponsored by bubbly. Hello, bibliophiles. My name is Jill, and I'm here on my lunch break. Um, I have half a bagel left to eat <laughs> while I'm filming this video. Um, you remember on the Great British Bake Off when Candace wore like a nude lip one episode, um, or she didn't wear any lipstick, I can't remember which one it was, basically her lips were like white, and she looked crazy because she was so, we were so seeing her in like a bright lip. That's how I feel today looking at myself with that lipstick on. Is that an obscure reference? It can be. I'm here to do the history something tag. I can't remember the name of the tag, I always get it wrong, um, but it's, if you click on the video you know the name of the tag. Um, I'm here to do it because it is nonfiction November and I figured this is the perfect time to do this tag. I was tagged to do this by Lana X Libris and so I'll link her channel down below. She makes some interesting cool videos so I recommend checking her out and uh, thank you Lana for tagging me. Let's get into the questions. The first question is, and I'm looking at my laptop down here, that's why I'm looking down, um, what first got you into history? And um, I don't know, I think I've always been kind of into history. I feel like that question is um, like being born to my parents. <laughs> my dad has always been really into history and I've always just been someone who wants to know like what happened, like why, why are things the way they are? I guess like kind of specifically, I could like pinpoint to grade four or five when I was like nine or 10. When I started, I think I read The Diary of Anne Frank before we had to read it for school. I picked it up. I don't even know how I heard about it, but I picked it up and uh, I was too young to read it, I think. I was probably, I think I was probably about nine. And then in grade five, my teacher gave me a copy of the book, uh, The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom, which is about um, this Christian family, Corey herself, her sister Betsy, and her father, her elderly father, um, who were living in Amsterdam at the time of the Second World War and the, um, during the occupation of the Netherlands, um, they took in Jews to uh, and built a hiding place in their house to keep them there. So the first part of the book is about that. The second part of the book is after the they were discovered and the um, the actual the Jews were never found in the hiding place. So that was quite amazing. Uh, but uh, her and her sister and her father were taken to concentration camps uh, for hiding Jews. And so it's a story. The second half is about that. Uh, and I think that kind of sparked a real interest in history for me. Second question, what is your favorite history book slash author? My favorite history book is Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe. A true story of murder and memory in Northern Ireland. I've talked about this a million thousand trillion times. Um, I haven't read anything else by Patrick Radden Keefe, actually. I think he's he's written two other books, both of which I have thought about getting at different times and then just haven't read them. But this is the story of Jean McConville who is a mother of 10, uh, a widowed mother of 10 in Northern Ireland in 1972. She is captured by the IRA. She's taken um, and she's disappeared, never to be found again. Uh, her 10 children are left without any knowledge of where she is or what happened to her. And then it's her story told alongside uh, the kind of the history of the IRA uh, and the troubles in Northern Ireland. And this book is a reflection in Northern, in not northern, narrative journalism. And I would recommend um, probably not reading this book this year. It's pretty dark. And um, some people who have read it this year or friends of mine who read it last year said like, I wish I, I'm glad I had, didn't read it this year because it's not really the right mood. Um, but this book is, I think, I think I love it so much because I, not only is it just so well crafted and it is like a true crime story because there is like a mystery to be solved in here. Um, it's just, I wish I could write as well as Patrick Radden Keefe to make such complicated, complex history like The Troubles so digestible. So this is my favorite history book, but also my favorite book. If we're talking about favorite history authors, I would have to say, I mean, just because I've read everything he's written, a lot of his books are not history. I should just say Bill Bryson. A lot of his books are not history, but the ones that are, I love. So this is his history book, um, One Summer, I mean, the thing is, he's he's like history light, you know? He takes, he looks at 1927, he takes kind of four uh, people or stories that happen in that summer and kind of loosely connects them. It's just a really great read. He's a, a light-hearted writer in that he's funny. Um, not everything is quite as dark and grim uh, as <laughs> something like Say Nothing. Um, but I particularly love his book, uh, the Life and Times of the Thunderbolt Kid, which is about, it's his own kind of memoir, but it's actually about growing up in the 50s in like a post-war America. And I love that book. I think it's very funny and also really interesting. The other book I love by him is called At Home, A History of Private Life. And that's probably my favorite of his books. If I was gonna pick one, I'd pick that one. I've read it a couple of times. And it's just, 
he goes through his home uh, in England and kind of walks through each room and ex and kind of goes through like the history of why things are the way they are in that room. He talks about um, like glass tacks and how difficult glass was to make for windows and talks about why we have buttons on our clothing on certain parts that don't make any that are not functional they're just there for decoration um so I love that book I think it's, oh that's my cat <laughs> knocking things off my bureau um anyway I love that book and uh I think he's probably my favorite history writer if I was going to pick someone who I I can't yet say for certain but I think will be is um Isabel Wilkerson I read cast this year and I think it is one of the best books I've ever read. This is, so this is actually more of like a social commentary book, but um, and she's kind of presenting like a, it's like a sociology. She's pre presenting like a new argument, but in it is a lot of history. She t looks at um, European history, American history, North American history, African history, like there's a lot in here. So um, I loved this book and yeah. So I think once I read her next book, I will be able to, say with confidence that she's one of my favorite writers. Question three is what is your most anticipated history book that you haven't yet read? As I just mentioned, The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson. That is on my TBR for this month. I'm picking it up imminently. Uh, what else do I have here? Oh, the one I'm really looking forward to that I haven't picked up yet but will be soon is called Stranger in a Sh sorry. Stranger in the Shogun City by Amy Stanley and this is the story of a Japanese woman in her world. Let me read you. I have my computer here. I'm going to read to you what it says on Goodreads about this book. It says it's a vivid, deeply researched work of history that explores the life of an unconventional woman during her first half of the 19th century in Edo, the city that would become Tokyo, and a portrait of a great city on the brink of a momentous encounter with the West. I mean, it looks amazing, and I'm going to order that soon. Um, but I'm on a bit of a book buying ban, but I do want to read that very, very soon. And the other one is by Anne Applebaum, who is known for her writing about Eastern Europe and especially about Soviet um, Soviet history. And it's called Iron Curtain, The Crushing of Eastern Europe, 1944 to 1956. I read Anne Applebaum's book this year called The Gulag, Gulag a History, and I uh, thought that was fascinating, really well researched, really well written. I thought her analysis was excellent. I'm looking forward to reading something that's not as like blanket statement dark as the Gulag history, but we shall see. Question four is what is your favorite time period and why? Um, probably post-World War II England, uh, England specifically, but Europe generally, but really like looking at post-World War II England um, and the drastic changes that happened to society, the structure of society. At the end of World War II and the real, true uh, shifting of, so of the society from the um, aristocratic class. And I also really love Gorbachev era Soviet Union history. Number five, what time period would you like to learn more about? I would love to learn about ancient Asian history. And I say that because I was supposed to take a class in university called Ancient Asian History with this professor who was notoriously difficult. And I say difficult um, generously. She was known to fail people or give people very bad grades just if she was in a bad mood. Um, but I wanted to take that class with her because I really wanted, to, it was the only class that was offered about Asian history. And on the first day we all like, and the, the room was like packed because everyone wanted to learn uh, about Asian history. I mean, went to the class and uh, we found out that she had like left the school or whatever so basically we never got to take the class so I have always been vaguely interested in Asian history I have no idea where to start especially ancient Asian history I'd like to learn Chinese history Japanese history um, I'd also like to learn um, more about the decolonization of Africa so I know a bit about it but not enough and I'm curious so I'd like to know more about that Question six is who is your favorite person in history? And I don't really know how to answer this question. I guess I would say Shakespeare. <laughs> um, I am obsessed with Shakespeare and his life and his life around him, like London, what it was like around him, his contemporaries, how it is that he created what he created in his environment. Um, so I'm less interested in the actual works of Shakespeare and more interested in the life of Shakespeare. A great starting point, if you're curious about it, I think is uh, Shakespeare, The World as Stage by Bill Bryson. It's very small. It's very approachable, really easy to get into. Um, but I would like to read more books about that by, I know that James Shapiro has a bunch of books about Shakespeare and his 
life and the world at that time. This is contested Will, who wrote Shakespeare. I I am of the mindset that Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare. James Shapiro's written a lot of stuff about Shakespeare, so I would happily read more by him. Also, if you have any recommendations, please let me know. And then I'm going to say something controversial, yet brave. Um, I am really interested in Margaret Thatcher because I don't fully comprehend why she is so hated. And I am on a mission to understand why, because I just don't. Yeah, so I haven't actually read a whole lot about it. I have her autobiography on my shelf that I have read a significant chunk of, just haven't finished it. When she died, I read a bunch of uh, like responses to her death. And um, yeah, I just want to know more because I don't really get it. And The Crown <laughs> is coming out. Season four is coming out in a couple of, in like two weeks. And um, whew, I can't, it looks so good. Margaret Thatcher is in this one. So is Princess Diana. It is like three powerful women, Diana, the queen, Margaret Thatcher, can't wait. It's gonna be great. Question number seven is probably my favorite question and is what history topic would you like to see more fiction slash nonfiction books about? I have two that I have frequently thought about trying to write myself because I haven't found anything that like that exists like it um, that fulfills what I want it to be. The first is I'd love to see a great historical analysis of the history of stand-up comedy. <laughs> Spe specifically, well, I'd love to see a history of stand-up comedy in North America, but also in Britain because I think they're two different trajectories and I would love, 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 love to see them. And I kind of feel a little bit like the most recent documentary, like a six-part episode documentary of um, Monty Python did that on Netflix. Um, a little bit, but I want to see much, much more. Like, I want to go earlier than them and much later. So, yeah, that's what I would love to see. If someone wants to give me a grant to write that book, I will. The other topic I would love to see is a book about the history of nail polish. I've seen a lot of books. I've read some books. I've watched a lot of videos about the history of makeup, but I want to learn about the history of nail polish specifically because um, I think I think there's a lot to it and I want to know more. So but again, if you want to give me a grant to write that book. Question number eight. This is a really hard question to read. What non-book resources do you enjoy when learning about history? That has taken me 25 takes <laughs> to say that question. Anyway, um, documentaries, duh. I watch, I think I've watched almost every documentary that Netflix has, except for all the, the murder ones, because at some point I don't want to learn about murder anymore. Um, it's too much sometimes for my little brain. Um, I love, obviously love documentaries. I love uh, podcasts, naturally. Um, I also really think that you can learn a lot. I know this is a non-book, but you can learn a lot about history from fiction. Um, a really good example of this actually is The Poppy War, which I'm currently reading uh, and really, really hooked on it. It's very, very good. This is based uh, very closely on Japanese, no, Chinese history, I'm very sorry, Chinese history on the Sino something war. Gosh, I don't know. I know almost nothing about this era that this is set in and it has really actually sent me down, like as I have finished certain sections, I've put the book down and like, done a bit of research to be like, oh, what is that supposed to symbolize? Um, so I did some reading of that actually last night and is really enhancing my reading experience and also has made me want to find more books about the actual um, history of this. Is it the Sino-Chinese War? Ooh, I'm so sorry if that's wrong, but um, the period and the war that this is based off of, I would like to know more about that IRL and not in fiction, but this is a very good book too. I also want to mention a channel that I love. It's called Oversimplified and I'll link it down below, but um, just kind of this guy who does cartoons about, mostly it's about war. I mean, I feel like a lot of history is based on military history and quite honestly, um, that's not my favorite kind of history, but those videos are quite hilarious and I highly recommend them. Um, so I will link, I think the one he did most recently was the Russian Revolution, which was very good. So I will link that down below. Question number nine is um, a favorite history quote or fun fact. I'm actually going to give a quote from one of my favorite books, Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. The very first sentence of the book is, history has failed us but no matter. Question number 10 is to shout out a booktuber who reads history. Um, I have three that I'd like to shout out because I really, really enjoy their channels. The first is Book of Shenanigans. She just posted recently her nonfiction of Ember TBR. I'll link her down below. Of course, A Cup of Books, you probably all watch her, but she she reads um, 
like really different stuff than I read and uh, like a lot of um, paleo is it prehistory paleolithic is that a, I don't know that it's like dinosaurs and stuff <laughs> she reads a lot of that which I don't she reads on like science and nature history as well as other things that um that I like to read but I always find her so interesting so I will link her below and then uh, Jennifer Brooks who reads a lot of um like art history and um like Italian history that I just am, know nothing about so I always find her videos really interesting too. So I'll link all of those down below. Happy nonfiction November everyone! I'm gonna go finish my lunch. Please leave a comment down below answering any of these questions if you want to. I would love to know what you guys think about this or make a video. Um, I tag anyone who wants to make a video. That's who I tag. And if you don't want to do a video just leave your comments down below. I'd love to know um, what you think about these questions. And um, of course I'm always down for recommendations especially recommendations about um, the things I said I wanted to learn more about. So decolon the decolonization of Africa and then uh, ancient Chinese and Japanese and um, any other particularly interesting Asian history that you would like to recommend to me, please do. Me, my bubbly, and my bagel are gonna go and um, just hang out and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!